Okay, let's get going with a lecture on basic hydraulics for landscape irrigation. This is a big topic and it's one that can be uh, really tricky. If you're going to design the landscape irrigation, you will need to learn this in greater detail. But if you are just installing the irrigation, then uh, I'm gonna try to give you a basic overview and there's three main parts. We're gonna do part one and two this week. So here we are with basic irrigation hydraulics. There are three essential factors that go together to make an irrigation system work. These are elements of hydraulics or the study of how water moves. And these have to do with pressure, velocity, and flow. So we're going to talk about water pressure. We're going to talk about water velocity. How fast is the water moving through the pipe? And then we're going to talk about uh, the flow, which is how much water is moving through the pipe. Water pressure is the weight of water caused by gravity that creates a force over a specific area. That's the technical definition. And that's uh, hard to understand what it's even talking about. But in sprinkler design, uh, we express this weight of water as pounds per square inch, PSI. So for every square inch of area, how many pounds of water is on top of it, pushing it down? And here you can see a hose bib with a pressure gauge. So you put that right up and you get a pressure reading of 95 PSI. That is static, does not change. And so every house will have a different water pressure coming into the house. So what is the source of your water pressure? Well, the vast majority of us have a water tower. That tower can be a tank on the top of a hill, which is the case for Southern California, usually in residential areas. Or it can be a, kind of the classic water tower. And you think of areas that don't have elevation, they have to elevate their water to create the pressure. This is what enables the water to come out of the faucet when you turn on the tap. It has to be higher up someplace and it flows downhill. What if your house is at the top of the hill and there's no water tank above your house? Well, then you need a pump. And so a pump can be powered with typically electricity. It is used to uh, pressurize your incoming water to a point where it can run through an irrigation system. Often these are uh, in places where you're pulling water from a well, or if you have a, a pond or a lake or a canal that serves as your irrigation water, then you'll need a pump in order to pressurize it. But oftentimes if you're in a house and you have a municipal system and you just happen to be really close to the water tower and you don't have the kind of pressure that you should, well, then you get a pump and they call that a booster pump because you're just boosting up the pressure. It does have pressure coming in and you need a little bit more to get it up to where it needs to be. So the two main sources of water pressure are the weight of water from, a elevated, from an elevated source and you can have a pump as well. And you can have both of them put together. So how do we use the weight of water in order to figure out how to uh, make sure our irrigation system's in line. Here's a little bit of math, and this can get quite math heavy. Try to just keep a conceptual understanding of what we're talking about here. And then as we work with it, it will become a little bit more familiar. So if you have water, that's one foot in height. That will create 0.433 pounds on the bottom. 
And you may say, does it depend on the size of the container? No, because you're counting every square inch, every postage stamp will have 0.433 pounds for every one foot of water above it. We call that a foot of head. It's a weird term, a foot of head, head pressure. So over your head is kind of how you think about it. And so one foot of head. One foot of head is 0.433 PSI. So what is one PSI? It's 2.31 feet of head. Do you see how those are related? One foot of height is a little less than half of one PSI. So therefore one PSI would be a little more than two feet of head. So those are connected to each other. We use both of those to help us figure out some hydraulic factors. So feet of head is the vertical difference in elevation between the top of the water column and the point where the pressure is measured. Very simply, if we had 23 feet of head, that gives us 10 PSI. And if we had 230 feet of head, that gives us 100 PSI. So these are the two important uh, factors. And as a formula, you can say the feet of head times 0.433 equals your PSI. So if you know how many feet of head you have between you and your irrigation source, you multiply that by 0.433 and that's your pressure. Alternatively, if you know your pressure, you multiply that by 2.31, that gives you your feet of head. How high above you is the column of water? Here's a graphic that is representing the concept of PSI. So imagine each of these cubes is one cubic inch. You stack them on top of each other, so there are 12. So it's one foot tall, 12 inches tall, and the bottom is one square inch. What you end up with at the bottom is a weight. Like if that could be on a scale, it would be 0.43 pounds. And that is how we define water pressure. So for every foot of elevation in a column of water, we get 0.433 pounds of force exerted per square inch. Now, here's a little drawing showing the tank and the house. And notice, we are 230 feet from the top of the water in the tank to the ground where the house is. And so with 230 feet of head, we know that we have about 100 PSI. If we use the formula, we do 230 times 0.433, and that'll get you 99.59 PSI. Here we have a water tank that is elevated 150 feet when it's full. It's 120 feet to ground level, from the water height to ground level. It goes down the pipe and into the water agency main line. We know that the pressure at the ground level is 52 PSI. And we know that the water agency main line is five feet underground. So therefore, can you determine the pressure at the top of the water agency main line? 54.125 PSI. Now, can you determine the pressure at the top of the water agency main line if the tank was filled to the full level? 67.115 PSI. Everything that we've been measuring so far is known as static pressure.
meaning this is the measurement of water pressure within a system while the water is not moving, while the water is at rest. When we take pressure readings and the water is not moving, the only influence of change in water pressure will be elevation. That's the only thing that's going to have an impact. Now, when we talk about static water pressure, one thing that kind of may not make sense, it's not intuitive, is that the distance has no effect. The only thing that changes your pressure is your elevation. So in this example, let's take a look at the drawing of the water tank. It's 150 feet to ground level. And we know at the hose bib, we have a pressure of 65 PSI. And if it's really close to the water tank, it will be 65 PSI. If we move 300 feet downstream, but the elevation stays the same, then it will be 65 PSI, exactly the same. So let's discuss how to determine the water pressure at the lowest point in the pipe and at the highest point in the pipe. In this diagram, you can see a water meter. The pressure is 80 PSI at the water meter. Once it goes into the irrigation system after the meter, we go down a hill 40 feet. And we know that going down in elevation will add pressure. So uh, you do the math. We do 40 feet times 0.433, we add that to 80, we get 97 PSI. Now that pipe then runs uphill 80 feet. So it's higher than it was before to the valve. So what is the pressure? You could take 80 times 0.433, or you could just look at the 40. And we know that from the water meter, you go up 40 feet to get to the valve at the end. And we will need to then subtract 17. We add 17 if we go down 40 feet, we subtract 17 from 80 if we go up 40 feet. And it doesn't matter how long the pipe is, doesn't matter how many times it goes up and down, the static pressure will always be related to the elevation. This is important because if you want to have irrigation run up a hill, you're gonna to have to account for the pressure loss. So just remember that the distance from the water tower will not affect the water pressure if the water is static and if the measuring points are at the same elevation. So length of pipe has nothing to do with it. it, can be 100 feet or 200 feet. And as long as the height, the finished height is the same, you'll have the same pressure.